What's up guys? Today's video is a species spotlight, but first I want to give you guys some updates on the shop build. I've decided to go with four IBC totes as water storage for the shop. Four of these IBC totes will roughly be around a thousand gallons of holding tank water. So everything's pretty much a hot mess in the shop right now. I have two by four stacked up. I have tanks laying everywhere. And that's because I've been killing myself with the idea of where I'm going to put the water storage in the shop setup. I decided to put it in the back corner. This is the space I lost over here. This is about four feet, the width of an IBC tote. But now I will have 1,000, get a little over a thousand gallons of holding tanks worth of water. I could have RO water in one, different types of water, different temperatures. Um, I'm really excited. I figured this out though, because it was killing me. And then there's this wall guys. This is my favorite wall of the entire shop build. This is going to be over 20 feet long. Of, I've actually made the decision. I know I do a lot of talking and um, you have to do a lot of dreaming to think these things up. There's going to be three six foot tanks on top. And then I'm going to build a plywood tank below that's going to be over 20 feet long. And it's going to be two feet wide. The bottom section is going to be the plywood tank. And I know it's, uh, you're just saying, oh, Chris, you're talking. Let's see it. Watch me build it, start building it this weekend. It's going to be crazy. So, so I know it seems like the shop build is coming together kind of slow, but things are actually happening really fast. I just pulled the trigger on getting natural gas ran to the shop here. That was a $1,900 bill and I have all the measurements figured out. The plumbing's going to come together, guys. I'm so ecstatic and excited, but guys, today's video is actually a species spotlight. So let's get into it. But to give you a little quiz before we start, what fish is this? This is today's species spotlight. If you know it, maybe you're a top level fish keeper. All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the upside down catfish. Uh, look at this crazy thing. You can see it gets its name from being upside down looking and it's swimming upside down. A lot of people don't know why this fish is like this. There's not a lot of fish like this, right? The upside down catfish. Um, its coloration has actually adapted and the darker skin is on the top of the fish because hence that's the side that's looking at the sun. And um, it is said that people think the fish swims upside down to have an upper edge when feeding because all the other catfish are at the bottom and are bottom feeders. So this fish has an upper hand by being able to go to the surface it feeds on crustaceans, insects, uh, also <clears throat> greens. This is an omnivore, so feeding it in your tank is going to be extremely easy. One thing you got to watch out, the Cynodontus genus has issues getting along with other fish, and especially catfish. People always ask me, can I keep my fish with a pleco? I would say don't keep this with other catfish. Cynodontus catfish sometimes have issues and get very territorial. Some people keep them with African cichlids because they're super sturdy in that fashion. Um, it is said that uh, minimum tank size was 22 gallons on some of the care guides. Guys, this is a six inch fish at full size. I would say at least a 55, man. Give this fish a little room. Uh, super, super easy fish to take care of. Make sure, like I always preach with catfish, that they have enough hiding spots and dark places because catfish get insecure and need some hiding spots, you know, and I argue with people all the time about that. Get them some pipes, get them some dark caves, have enough night time, you know, shut off the lights. These guys do a lot of their feeding at night. I don't know if they're completely nocturnal, but it is said that they do most of their feeding at night. Super cool fish. Um, there's not a lot of information in regards to how to breed them. And this is somewhat of an oddball exotic fish. Like it's been a quite some time since I've seen them at one of my local fish stores. <coughs> sorry, sorry. I'm okay. As Michael's fisherman would say, I'm okay. 